cortisol and stress. What is it? How do you manage it? And what can you do to fix your stress levels so that your cortisol levels do not impact your life? So today we're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to define it and hopefully you will better understand what it does to all of the functions in your body. Uh, so this is a list of the things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to define stress, cortisol, and DHEA. We're going to talk about what the levels being balanced and imbalanced does to your body. We're going to understand uh, how to be mindful and how to practice mindfulness. And we're also going to see how we can apply all of these things into our everyday lives. Uh, so what exactly is cortisol? Well, cortisol is a steroidal hormone that is produced in our adrenal glands. And uh, these adrenal glands are right above our kidneys. Uh, and, and this hormone is produced uh, right there in our kidneys. And it is something that is stimulated in response to stress. Uh, but one thing that people don't realize is it is a condition that is caused by various factors. It is not just stress as we know it. Uh, there are different types of stress, which is what I'd love to share with you. Um, but, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, there are things that cortisol does control. Uh, there are hormones and chemicals that coordinate all different types of function within our bodies. And these, fu these functions carry different messages throughout our lungs, our organs, our skin, our muscles, and all other tissues. And these are messages that signal our bodies and tell us what to do. Um, what's really interesting is not only does stress and hormones control all of these things, but cortisol regulates our body's stress response. It helps control our body's use of fats and proteins, carbohydrates, and of course our metabolism. It suppresses inflammation. Uh, cortisol also regulates our blood pressure, regulates our blood sugar, and it helps control our sleep wake cycle. Now, as humans, we do function on a diurnal sleep pattern. Uh, we do best during the day and we sleep best at night and our cortisol patterns do and should reflect that. Uh, now, as society brings us a lot of stress, uh, we do tend to function on this very unperceived uh inaccurate perceived stress level um in fact recent studies provided by the cdc show that 60 percent of americans operate on an inaccurate perceived stress level and what this means is we we go through life um assuming that we're fine uh we go through life thinking that we're not stressed uh we we cope um, we self-treat, we self-medicate, and we don't feel the catastrophic effects of what this cortisol is doing. And uh, we are still stressed. The cortisol is still being released and uh, our bodies are still being broken down. So there are three different types of stress. Um, and I'm going to kind of go through each one of these. There are three main types of stress responses. There's acute stress. And this is when you are in sudden danger uh, within a short period of time. This is you getting punched in the face. Uh, this is a sudden car accident or, you know, back primitively, we were chased by bears, right? When you are in acute stress, uh, there is that fight or flight uh, cortisol release and we tend to feel this. It's this jolt of, of cortisol, fight or flight. Um, there's also chronic stress, and this is long-term stress. This is when somebody has been going uh, on and on and on with this stressful factor for a long, long time. And, and usually people are just really used to this type of stress. It's something that has caused them a lot of anxiety. And, um, and they're, they're really kind of, it's just part of their life. Um, this might be someone that's having um, a marital issue, chronic illness, chronic stress, 
uh, he just has a really difficult life, uh, hard job. Um, and so, so this is chronic. Um, again, someone that has chronic stress is used to this stress. Uh, they're not so much waking up every day feeling like I'm stressed because it's, it's just part of their day, but their body is still breaking down. Um, and then of course there's traumatic stress. And this is when, uh, you experience a life threatening event that induces a lot of fear, a uh, feeling of helplessness. This would be like a, 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 a tragic weather event such as a tornado or a uh, sexual assault. Um, this also kind of falls into the category of like a PTSD sort of situation where um, you might be fine and then something triggers you and it, it brings out that, uh, that traumatic stress. So, so you can see that there's a several different types of stress curves. Now, what systems impact are impacted with stress. Now we all think that stress just kind of impacts our mind. Uh, stress impacts our, our weight. Of course, we know this because we see the commercials. Um, but, but interestingly, stress impacts all of the following. Uh, it impacts our nervous system, our immune system, uh, cardiovascular system, our respiratory system, reproductive system, our musculoskeletal system, and uh, all, all of other systems that include the production of our skin, nails, uh, hair, and glands. And interestingly, as, as I made this slide, I, I thought, you know, many people don't realize that stress impacts all of our body systems. But, but if you stop and think, we all know that when you're stressed, your immune system is down. Uh, when you're stressed, uh, your nervous system is is out of whack and 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 that leads to depression that leads to anxiety uh when you're stressed your nervous your reproductive system is down um you know with with the amount of people that are infertile uh you know you you think about the stressors in life uh that that cause the infertility um and then of course uh you know skin hair nails um i, I can't tell you how many times people have come uh, to sessions feeling very stressed and they feel it in their, uh, into their extremities. So, so yes, of course we do see those, those correlations. Uh, so, so let's talk about the impact of stress on the body. Um, we, we all know that during times of stress, your body is going to release this cortisol. Um, and, and again, this is this fight or flight hormone, uh, fight or flight hormone, such as adrenaline, uh, is going to keep you on high alert. Uh, in addition, cortisol triggers the release of glucose, which is sugar from your liver for fast energy during times of stress. So we've all heard of the mom that's able to, you know, flip the car over to save her three-year-old, uh, after the car accident, that is that fight or flight, uh, mechanism that's built in. Uh, this is not something you can plan for. This is just something that happens under times of stress. And typically when this occurs, uh, always your blood sugar will spike um, after this time. Uh, it, is, it is what happens to provide our body for that energy that's needed. Um, it also regulates our metabolism. So cortisol helps control how our bodies use fats, proteins, and carbs for energy. So, so if you are unable to regulate the stress uh, in your life, your body is not able to regulate how it uses fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And so this right here uh, is the finger pointing at why it's difficult to lose weight when you are stressed. Uh, and then of course, the inflammation being suppressed uh, in, in short spurts, cortisol can boost your in immunity by limiting inflammation. However, uh, under very high concentrations of cortisol, your body will get used to having a lot and it will lead to inflammation uh, throughout your body, body and a weakened immune system. So basically, uh, we have a built-in mechanism in that when we are stressed, uh, cortisol will reduce inflammation. Um, it is a painkiller as well. But if you are constantly reducing cortisol and your adrenals are just pumping it out every day, 
every day. Um, your body's eventually going to be flooded with it. Uh, your blood is going to have an overabundance of cortisol. Therefore, it's just going to stop reading it. It's just going to be used to the amount of cortisol and it's going to weaken your immune system. And so therefore you will feel uh, chronically inflamed. And oftentimes when people have a uh, chronic uh, or, or imbalanced uh, cortisol levels, it will lead to uh, autoimmune issues such as uh, arthritis uh, and lupus and a lot of those autoimmune diseases that we see that are arthritis related. All right, so not only does it impact us that way, but it also does regulate our blood pressure. Um, uh, it increases uh, our blood sugar, like we talked about under normal circumstances. It is going to uh, counterbalance the effects of insulin, uh, but, but however, too much cortisol is again going to lead to too much blood sugar. Uh, too much blood sugar is going to lead to diabetes. Um, so, so of course, you can see that too much cortisol um, is, is not a good thing. Um, it's going to bring you to disease. And then, of course, uh, the, the sleep-wake cycle, uh, under regular circumstances, uh, you, you want to have lower cortisol uh, in the evening when you go, when you go to bed. And you want to have a peak level when you wake up. Um, this is this is in ties with our circadian rhythm. Uh, however, if you have an overabundance of cortisol um, in the middle of the night um, and, and your body isn't able to regulate it, you aren't going to be able to have a proper sleep wake cycle. And this is going to throw you off with your circadian rhythm. All right. So what are these symptoms? Um, what are symptoms of high cortisol? Of course, you can assume that you have high cortisol. You can assume that you're stressed. Uh, you can take a uh, an actual test, but uh, of course, we can talk about that in a bit, but, but we can also look at some clinical correlations, uh, which are symptoms to see how your stress levels and your cortisol levels are. So symptoms of high cortisol are weight gain, especially in the face or in the abdomen. Uh, fatty deposits between the shoulder blades, uh, wide and purple stretch marks across the abdomen. And this typically happens because of the overabundance of, of belly fat. Uh, muscle weakness in the upper arms and thighs, high blood sugar, which often turns to type two diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, excessive hair growth, um, and this is uh, something that does come with both men and women. And then of course, weakened bones and fractures. And, and again, if you have these symptoms, this does not mean that you have high uh, cortisol, but it is an indicator. So symptoms of high cortisol. Another symptom is that, that steam. Uh, you know, that steam that just kind of wants to blow. Uh, we call this venting. All right. So when you want to vet, this is, this is you, uh, holding on to emotions. This is, this is you bottling up stress. Um, with, with that lid secured tight, uh, you're, you're not, uh, releasing your stress. And uh, what this does is it, it, it builds up on that cortisol. And so today I'm going to show you how you can actually decrease your cortisol levels, um, which will help prevent a lot of these diseases. So, so the key is you want to release the steam slowly and indirectly throughout the day because so as we test your cortisol levels, uh, it's important to note that we not only need to see what your cortisol levels are, but we also need to test another very important hormone. Uh, cortisol is catabolic to our body. It breaks it down. Uh, there's another hormone that builds it up. Um, it is anabolic to the body. 
And that hormone, DHEA, is, DHEA is a hormone that your body e produces a. naturally, also in the adrenal gland. Uh, but and DHEA that hormone is one that is we lose DHEA each year e as we age, particularly a. after the age of 35. So, so there are ways to DHEA naturally increase e the DHEA a. levels. And uh, it is the balance of and DHEA, DHEA to cortisol is that DHEA is important e because if we have a good balance a. of DHEA to cortisol, uh, our body will not and break down. So it's all about balance. Uh, in order to keep your stress levels down, you must keep your DHEA levels up. So to be clear, uh, stress is going to happen we're going to have stress. Uh, and it's not just about stress in the outside world. Uh, there might be stressors internally. Uh, you might be uh, having a, an allergic reaction to a food. Uh, there might be a, a, a toxic uh, environment that you are exposed to. Uh, there might be some uh, gut issues that need to be resolved. Those are all stressors. So in order for our cortisol, to, uh, to be balanced uh, in order for our stress levels to keep us from breaking down the body, we need to have increase of DHEA. So how do There are simple ways that you can do this throughout the day. Uh, first off, having a good bedtime routine will increase your DHEA. Uh, if you go to bed at a good time, if you are sleeping well throughout the night without a lot of interruptions, uh, you're sleeping in a dark room, you're getting to bed uh, at a decent hour and you're waking up at a normal hour and you're staying on uh, a circadian rhythm, uh, you're sleeping uh, during the night and you're awake during the day will increase your DHEA. Uh, the second one is you're able to identify stress. Uh, you're not just going through the day uh, dealing with stress and having a big pity party about it. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is oftentimes when we are going through the day with the, uh, the glass being half empty all the time, uh, when you wake up feeling down, blue, pessimistic, uh, focusing on only your problems, instead of looking on the bright side, feeling uh, secure about yourself, feeling uh, aimed toward a goal, uh, toward a solution, uh, your, your, your DHEA levels are, are going to be low. So having that goal, focusing on something for your own betterment is going to uh, increase your DHEA and identifying the stress, realizing that you are under stress, uh, so that you can bring on the next few things. Uh, deep belly laughing. Uh, deep belly laughing uh, has been researched and uh, DHEA levels uh, increase substantially when we deep belly laugh. And I, I don't just mean laughing because you're having a good time. I'm talking about the deep belly laughing. Uh, and I often say the, the middle school laugh the one that you are uh, can't stop laughing, uh, teacher's gonna kick you out of, of English class if you keep it up with your best friend, that kind of laugh. Um, and in today's society, we have enough TikTok videos and Instagram wheels, reels and, and just funny clips that we can save a few of these on, on our phone. Uh, and, and if you're having a, a, a bad day or a blue moment, break that out and make yourself just laugh. Uh, there's, there have been documented cases of people that have extended their lifeline um, with, with known cases of terminal illnesses just by implementing the deep belly laughing on interval. And, 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 and what I mean by that is uh, they, they don't sit around and wait for the, do the doctor's diagnosis of, of their, their cancer getting worse. Um, they apply deep belly laughing, um, much like a medication, timely matter every day, uh, watching funny movies, uh, regularly to enhance, uh, the production of DHA, obviously eating a healthy diet, 
a nutritious diet uh, is going to uh, keep your body clicking and ticking. Uh, that DHEA will uh, be produced on a normal rhythm. Uh, and that also goes for exercise. Um, but, but in addition to that, if you are somebody that doesn't exercise or, or even exercises too much um, and, and you're wanting to create this, this channel of DHEA that is going to be released throughout the day regularly. Again, we want to do this regularly. Um, this is not just something we do on days that we're stressed. Uh, we want to do this regularly because we want to have balance. Uh, try, try doing uh, mini workouts. Uh, try doing you know five minute little micro workouts throughout the day in addition to your workouts or or uh, instead of your workouts or those of you that aren't working out do that for your workout and what i mean by that is you know get up and and run up and down a flight of stairs or get up and do a couple jumping jacks a couple push-ups that aim that focus um, is going to create that dhea funnel um, it is going to create the, uh, the amplification of DHEA regularly in your system. Um, and then of course the deep breathing. And uh, certainly when you start feeling stressed, uh, this would be a really good time to bring in the deep breathing. But if you can plug in deep breathing exercises throughout your day, whether or not you're feeling stressed, um, this is going to increase your DHEA and the type of deep breathing is the type where your diaphragm is being used. Uh, and if you've never done this before, uh, I always tell people to put your hand right outside your belly and breathe deeply so that you can feel your stomach pop out. Uh, on to your, towards your hand. And that, that, is, uh, that is an indicator that you are using your uh, diaphragm. All right. And then of course, be conscious and be present. Uh, when we multitask, uh, we, we tend to take on too much. Uh, when we're multitasking, we aren't paying attention. Uh, we aren't aware of the fact that we might be stressed. Uh, get in touch with your senses and veer away from those distractions. And what I mean by that is if, if you have three or four tabs open, meaning you are uh, creating your grocery list while you're paying your bills, while you're feeding your baby, while you're trying to get a workout in, um, you're not going to realize where your stress is at and you aren't going to take a minute to get in touch with your senses and uh, realize the, the, the catabolism that's, that's going on with your uh, cortisol levels rising. Um, and so, so by avoiding the multitasking, uh, you will be able to get in touch with those senses. That's all said and done, just great, until reality happens. Uh, I'm sure you're feeling really inspired uh, to, to put this to practice, but then, like I said, reality happens. Um, and I really want you to be successful at this. Um, more than likely, people will put this to good use um, until it becomes very chaotic. And so I wanted to put a, a, a real life demonstration here um, uh, in action so that you can see how this could be used. All right. So, so this here is a cortisol DHEA, uh, pictograph. Um, on the left here, I have a little thermometer that is showing what, uh, this person's D cortisol levels are, um, and what their DHEA levels are. And as a reminder, um, if your cortisol is rising, uh, and your DHEA is not, this is where the body will break down. Um, if your cortisol level keeps rising, that is where disease will happen. Um, once that cortisol level rises, it also impacts your sex hormones. Um, this is where we start seeing issues with hormonal imbalances. And often we blame menopause. We blame perimenopause. 
Um, but, but truly what this is, it is a, uh, issue with cortisol, DHEA, uh, imbalances. And so, so if you are somebody that is struggling with your hormones, um, this absolute can be, uh, targeted and fixed. So, so at 10 AM, uh, the first stressor occurred. So at 10 o'clock, the school nurse called and uh, this woman has to go pick up her child. And so because of that, stress level went up. Uh, but sadly at one o'clock, uh, the stress level went up a little higher because uh, she got a, another phone call uh, from her mom and uh, her mom let her know that she is needing to take a couple days off next week to help the mother um, because the mom's going to have to have surgery. So this, this poor woman's stress level is climbing. Um, over here in DHEA, uh, there's, been, there's been nothing um, because there, there have not been any practices uh, put forth in increasing her DHEA. Uh, six o'clock, husband calls and uh, completely slipped her mind with her daughter being home, uh, her mom's up and coming surgery, and her husband called her and told her, uh, reminded her that he's bringing home uh, a colleague for dinner. And uh, the husband called to ask if it was okay that uh, the dinner that she prepared was completely gluten-free and dairy-free because the colleague has some allergies that he wasn't aware of. And so now, we have a stress level that has gone through the roof. All right, so DHEA completely imbalanced. We have a sick kid at home. We have a uh, mom needing surgery, a uh, couple days that need to be taken off next week, and a dinner that needs to be prepared, uh, and it has to be completely gluten-free and dairy-free. We have a frazzled person. Uh, now, enough of these days are going to break the body down. Enough of these days are going to uh, dysregulate hormones, uh, dysregulate progesterone, dysregulate estrogen, estradiol, testosterone. Um, enough of these days are going to eventually break down the body even further, uh, cause blood sugar issues, cause blood pressure issues, um, and, and a lot of the things that we talked about. Uh, so, so what is one to do? I will show you. Same scenario. Uh, 10 o'clock, the school calls. And uh, she got to pick up her sick kid. Well, uh, her little girl has been sitting in the, uh, the office now for about a minute. So, so what my client decided to do, based on everything that we've taught her and everything that she's learned, is uh, she's decided to take one extra minute because what's one extra minute um and she's she's done her favorite stretches so she plops down on the floor uh does a couple planks a couple butt kicks um and hops in the car um and as she's driving uh the car she turns on her favorite music which is calming her and now without her realizing this her dhea levels have increased so, so if we were to do a panel on her right now, we would see that her cortisol and her DHEA levels are balanced. And when we have balance, uh, we don't have catabolism. Uh, we don't have the body breaking down. Uh, we don't have uh, blood sugar dysregulation. We don't have blood pressure issues. And we don't have uh, issues with our sex hormones. Uh, we aren't going to have issues with our progesterone and our estradiol. Um, we're not going to have issues with our monthly periods either because those are all going to impact um, our menstrual cycles as well. Okay, so she picks up her daughter and brings her home and at one o'clock her mom calls uh, with the news that uh, she's going to be needing to take off a couple days of work next week to help assist her mother with this outpatient surgery. Um, now, again, uh, this is stressful. 
Uh, but she is working on strategies to help her control the cortisol and balance it with DHEA. Um, again, uh, this client has been with me for a while, and so she, she understands that she can't wait till the end of the day, because if she waits till the end of the day, um, it, is, it is like that, that pot with the steam about to, to burst off. And so what she's done is she hangs up the phone uh, with her mom and she, she exercises her deep breathing and, uh, she spends maybe two or three minutes doing this. And as she's doing this, she's focusing on, uh, strategies that she's going to use, uh, to work out the issues with needing to take the time off, um, needing to help her mother instead of spiraling. Um, and, and, and typically when we spiral, we, we spin, we spin and we let all of those random thoughts really, uh, just boggle us down. And, and, and that incidentally does increase our cortisol. All right. So now same thing, same scenario, six o'clock rolls around, a husband calls, reminds her that dinner, colleague, gluten-free, dairy-free, blah, blah, blah. So, so she's, she's at her limit, but again, um, we're, we're at a different scenario because she's managed her, her cortisol levels, um, same stress, but, but her body isn't feeling it because she has applied these principles of increasing her DHEA. Now, now you might call them, uh, stress reduction, um, activities, but, but what these are are actual uh, activities that stimulate the production of this hormone. And uh, so, so what she does uh, to, to help her get through this agony, uh, she's so mad at her husband right now. She's just so mad at him right now. Um, she, she pops open one of her uh, videos of her husband uh, falling flat on his face <laughs> one summer. Uh, in fact, he slipped right into the pool uh, and it was only uh, 55 degrees, froze his butt off and, and shared it with the daughter and they laughed and laughed and laughed. And uh, after that, she realized time had, had passed and they went ahead and just ordered dinner. And so, so in the end, uh, you can see here that her day ended balanced. So if we were to uh, do a lab on her, we would see that her balance, her levels are balanced. And if we were to do this over and over, if we were to apply these principles day in and day out, not only would this person get used to, um, applying these principles every time stress occurred, but the catabolic damage would not occur. Um, this person would have a lot better balance, not only with cortisol, but also with sleep, with hormonal balances, with weight, with her body being able to break down nutrients. Um, and, and I got to think that she, she is going to be a, a much happier person as well. So how do we apply these, these mindfulness tools? Um, especially when we are busy, especially when we are, are on the go. Um, and, and, and truly the best way to do this is to be aware of it. Um, you have the tools, we have to plug them in to our day. Uh, so, so basically work on your breathing, uh, practice midday meditation. Um, just like anything else in life, we've gotten used to taking time to do certain things. Take time to breathe, set visual reminders up for yourself. Um, I've had many people uh, take popsicle sticks as visual reminders uh, and, and color code them. You know, color code ones that mean breathing yellow, color code other ones that mean uh, stretching blue to keep you moving through your day and adding these exercises to keep your cortisol levels down. Um, and, and of course, as you complete this, you're going to notice that your 
attention span is going to increase. Uh, your stress levels are going to decrease. Um, you're going to have so many more connections, not only with uh, your family members, but um, you're going to find decreased burnout in many things that you do. Um, men will make better husbands. Women will make better wives. Parents will make better moms and dads. Employees will be more effective. Uh, employers will be definitely stronger leaders and uh, employees will definitely be happier. Uh, anxiety rates are reduced, alcohol use is reduced and aggressive behavior is also reduced. 89% out of 200 individuals uh, find that practicing these mindfulness exercises will decrease uh, medication. In fact, a recent poll showed that 89% out of 200 individuals were able to get off of anxiety medication and 78% out of 200 individuals were able to get off of blood pressure medication simply by adding these mindfulness exercises in their day. Uh, the mind is just like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it will get and the more it will expand. So all you have to do is put your mind to practice and use it. So hopefully this helped and I really hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thanks you guys.